I don't know if it's working. So uh, Vasilis comes to us from the motherland, <laughs> Greece, and uh, he's going to be talking to us about geo-redundant redundant ITSP architectures using OpenSIPS 2.4. Vasily's company is uh, Voiceland, and they are the premier VoIP provider in the motherland. Okay, I hope this By the way, this is open. how are we doing on our uh, list of topics for the final presentation tomorrow? Anybody got any ideas? Test, test. Can you hear me? One, one two, three, test, test. You're working. Really? This is my second time asking you people. Bunch of freaking slackers. It's working. Test. Come on, give me one topic that you would love to hear about that isn't on the schedule. Game of Thrones. <laughs> IPv6. IPv6? Oh. What? You gonna be okay? You need help? <laughs> okay, so we've got our first topic, IPv6. Is there already? Further clarification on what you're looking for? It's a very broad topic. Test, test. People's feelings about IPv6? <coughs> Open SIPs in IPv6? So you want to say about test, 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 test. WebRTC? WebRTC? Yeah. Amateur. <laughs> <laughs> It looks like... Uh, you know we have the uh, Rebel PC Mafia over here. They exactly. Don't allow yourself to talk like that. I can't believe you let him say something with the people. <laughs> All right, so let's let Vasilios take it away. Okay, okay. Thank you. It's uh, an, uh, another year. Pleasure for me to be here among uh, all of you guys. And uh, we will talk about uh, how to solve uh, problems that uh, also asked before about uh, active-active scenarios. Uh, about uh, how to fix things that uh, I weren't be able to be fixed uh, uh, before the three version, like uh, the tag uh, we were talking uh, before, and uh, how we address these uh, issues and uh, uh, all these problems uh, in uh, in Voiceland. So let's see in our early days what we had. I, I don't know if uh, any of you is uh, a startup uh, dealing with. Uh, uh, SIP service, uh, SIP solution uh, to offer service to customers, uh, uh, and they are just starting now. They are newcomers here. Okay, great. Uh, so uh, you ha you have uh, some kind of infrastructure, right? So uh, as uh, we all we all started small, uh, this one might be familiar to you. <laughs> This uh, how we were. <laughs> we started uh, many years ago, and we were very happy. And uh, we were like this for uh, more than a year plus. I might lie. So what we had? We had one server. We have all of our vendors connected to this server, and our happy clients. I don't remember the uptime of uh, the machine, but it was uh, over a year. But uh, uh, this wasn't uh, going uh, very far. As uh, you can understand, we had very limited uh, features. Of course, we used open source. It was an asterisk-based machine for all of the stuff. CDR, billing, the web interface, administration <coughs> interface, all in one box. So after some time, one t year or two, we had upda updated our infrastructure. Wow. We have three machines. <laughs> yes. And guess what? For, for some reason, but I can't remember, I think it had to do with uh, uh, interoperability re reason for our, uh, some of our vendors. Uh, we had uh, uh, to do a trust coding. Uh, to G729 uh, codec. Uh, so, uh, yes, we updated our infrastructure with two more servers, asterisks, for transcoding only. All the other parts remain the same. 
no restart. So, uh, in the third year or something, uh, we did our major update. That's boom. <laughs> Another two machines. <laughs> so, we have uh, more providers, the local providers still uh, there. And we have open shifts, dynamic routing, uh, RTP proxy, and uh, we were very happy with this setup for many, many, uh, for almost two, two, two or three years. Uh, but still, one machine doing billing, CDRs, reportings, and uh, as you can understand, uh, this was uh, only one server. Uh, some somewhere in Germany, I, I I don't remember the name of the of the provider, right now. Uh, uh, and uh, still our customers happy. <laughs> Which is the most important part uh, of what we are doing to keep our customers happy. Okay, let's uh, move forward now uh, to see. Uh, what's happening right now and uh, I have to say uh, a big thank you to the guys to the open source, to the open ships team and uh, all the uh, community for the contributions because this part here uh, you will see uh, they are all open source projects and without those projects and uh, the contribution of the community and the guys involved uh, none of this uh, would be uh, real so what we have, I need to step. We have Anycast. We have uh, deployed open ships with Anycast. Active, active. It was my dream. <laughs> of course, it was my dream. Because I was always searching for active, active. No, active, back. It's, uh, it's working, uh, it's stable, <coughs> uh, but I want to, uh, I want to sleep at night. <laughs> <laughs> so, what we have created? <coughs> we have created any cask solution, all of our networking ourselves. Routers, switches, and plenty of bare metal machines. Believe me, you have to do that. And this, and this. And I hope you all of you, all of you uh, will do that sometime. What we have implemented? Multi-home BGP with uh, uh, multi-vendors. Uh, we have our own AES number. So we are announcing our uh, last 24 over the internet, and uh, we have low latency switches. It doesn't matter. This is, this uh, is uh, right now is open hardware. Uh, the 10 gigabit switches was uh, introduced uh, many years ago uh, as low latency ones. They were created by Microsoft that uh, by Microsoft for its own data centers. Uh, low latency for voice over IP implementation. So, OpenShift with the uh, RTP engines here, car, with asterisk for, we're using this for, uh, not for transcoding, transcoding is being done here. Well, uh, here is uh, regarding the application part, uh, let's say, uh, uh, PBX functions, recordings. The core part is OpenShift. Where we have, we have implemented most of the modules of OpenSIPS and we have exported all the statistics, the functions, and all, all the way that it works outside of the engine to be able to manage the infrastructure uh, from uh, completely and, and from, uh, from outside. <coughs> because uh, we want it uh, that way so we can scale. And as you can see, here is one data center. Just imagine a clone of this in the second data center. So, 
any event, any call, any request goes to RabbitMQ. First, goes to CityRage, a great open source project. I will show you later how we use it. And uh, we're saving our user locations here in Mongo and CDRs from CityRage. We're uh, using also Kafka uh, as a producer and as a consumer in depends on what we're going to do to get data from the Rabbit and Q. We will also use the, uh, the new feature uh, OpenShift as a consumer. That's why we keep the Rabbit and Q. <laughs> we, uh, we could have uh, uh, moved that from the infrastructure and have only Kafka. Kafka has a REST uh, interface also. And with the REST client from OpenShift, we can talk directly to Kafka. But uh, uh, we, uh, we kept it. And uh, now we can consume messages also. Uh, as you can imagine, any part is a standard. Any part. Any part. As, uh, as we thought, we, uh, we didn't want anything uh, to, to be able to bring us down. Anything. So we're saving data, archiving first Amazon S3 or Google Cloud. We're saving data uh, to Elasticsearch. We have uh, some more connection, but I, don't, I didn't want to, uh, to make it uh, so complicated. So I just wanted to show the only the basic parts. Uh, we're saving some more data to Elasticsearch, for example. Uh, we have uh, uh, connected the uh, Kafka with, uh, with uh, some other stuff here. And uh, of course, our database cluster. We had to use that. We had to use that because we are using uh, OpenShift not only as a proxy server or not only as a registration server, but we're using it as a back-to-back -back user agent. So currently, uh, we're saving uh, the dialogues also for the back-to-back -back user agent here. Uh, there's some kind of, uh, of bug saving the data of the back-to-back -back user, uh, user agent uh, to, to other database. <coughs> we would like to save them for example, to Mongo, but uh, there is some kind of bugs, uh, bug, so uh, we couldn't use that. But uh, okay, let's move forward, and we can uh, come back uh, later. Okay, uh, this is our core engine. So the request comes down from the switches. We have Anycast IP. It's uh, one and only uh, IP. Uh, you can use it. Uh, among with uh, RTP engine and token ships in one uh, instance. So your customers will need to know only one IP. Very easy, uh, easy to bypass uh, firewall setups. You just need to know your IP address. And you don't have any limitations or uh, uh, fears about changing IPs or uh, instances don't work after failover uh, and all this uh, and all this stuff. So the request goes back Back and goes down to open shift back to back user agent, which clears the messages from the customer, keeping only the headers that need to be uh, kept for the routing process. And uh, we are moving uh, to the Astrid farm if it's needed for uh, some other okay. uh, from uh, for some other uh, reason. Uh, we can do recording here, and then we send uh, the recording files to the cloud. Uh, we are doing some other, uh, maybe redirection for wording uh, stuff here. <coughs> and of course, uh, the RTP engines are uh, the media proxy of the bug. And uh, we are uh, pushing down uh, to the OpenShift proxy, who is uh, responsible to talk to other applications and to move uh, the call uh, down to our uh, SBCs or other part of our, net of our network. So let's take a look at uh, how we work inside. A call comes in. Uh, there are some security checks made from OpenShift, of course, uh, side. And then we're using uh, CG rates uh, to see if it's a, a valid user, <coughs> if, it, if it has uh, the right credentials to be our user. We're using CG rates uh, also for uh, creating uh, domains. And we're also uh, we're checking our domains using 
CDAs also. And uh, user is registered, user location in a MongoDB guess what cluster, of course. And then uh, we check uh, authorization and uh, uh, using again uh, CG rates. And then we're moving down uh, according to the call. If, it, if it's, uh, for example, call recording enabled, the call is going to the back to back user agent, or talking to the asterisk or free, or free switch. It's get, it's uh, the call recording enabled. So uh, we have features for recording to one side, the caller or the colleague, or both of them. Uh, and then uh, we move forward <coughs> and uh, creating uh, the call, the profiles, and uh, sending the call uh, outside. As you can see here, in every step, we are reading uh, data from CASI. We are using uh, uh, right now uh, Redis CAS, but you can use uh, any other CAS. Uh, we have uh, also tested with uh, Cassandra uh, module uh, successfully. Uh, you, we need to be fast in each step. We need to have also uh, local reads, lo local writes. Uh, we are talking about multi data centers. We don't need, we don't want uh, to grab information or send information over one. We need to be fast, robust. So we have to do huge casting. We are setting uh, all of our uh, parts for every module that supports exporting functions to RabbitMQ. And then we consume, consume it uh, from uh, other applications. We also export uh, RTCP quality stats for every call. Uh, we have all those information uh, in Homer also, but we also uh, export it so we can uh, uh, analyze it internally and uh, show some parts to the user. This is saved, uh, for example, uh, in the Elasticsearch uh, database. And of course, we're using cluster and module and uh, dialog support uh, to have uh, plain limitations for outbound calls, inbound calls, and total calls. Uh, we need to have the, the opportunity to uh, charge let's say, customers for inbound calls uh, only, tunnels, uh, for outbound charge. Someone wants uh, inbound routing uh, only. So we, we have created total calls, limits, inbound call limits, and outbound calls, and they are all uh, shared and clustered between all the data centers. As we have, uh, we have talked, we are using every event that is being documented. <laughs> Every, uh, even the latency update of the, uh, of the request, the registration request. Okay, this is a, an example of uh, RabbitMQ uh, publish and module. Uh, every call, direction of, uh, of the call, the caller, and, uh, and the user agent, it might be interested, uh, interesting uh, uh, sometimes. Based on request, we are using uh, uh, OpenShift statistics to send statistics uh, every, let's say, 20 minutes, 5 minutes, 10 minutes uh, to our uh, dashboards. We are doing huge caching. We don't uh, uh, bother the database if we don't need to do. And this is a very good example in the registration process. The, C, uh, the, the RFC mentions that uh, we have, uh, uh, let's say, uh, we make a request, it says uh, it sends back unauthorized, but we have already asked the, the database. If you don't do this, you will ask the, the database uh, without uh, uh, having to. So we just, uh, uh, if, we, if we don't uh, have the authorization, authorization header, we just challenge it. We don't ask the database, and we ask them on the other, uh, on the second time. So, regarding the caching and uh, the distribution among the data centers, we are using Redis Multimaster uh, open source project. This is used by Netflix. 
this is a very interesting, uh, interesting project. It has some limitations regarding the commands that, that can be uh, used, but uh, for our setup, it, uh, it works uh, fine. And it has security uh, as support uh, between the communication of the nodes. We are also using Cassandra for uh, casting some other stuff. Uh, uh, and uh, <coughs> user profiles, current calls, password, user limits, and as we said before, we need to have all this local read and write. Cassandra and uh, Redis Multi Master gave us this, this opportunity to have local read and write. An example about uh, dialect profiles and uh, of replication among the data centers and among uh, OpenShift instances inside the same data center. Limitation for inbound and outbound calls. Okay, this is an example of how you would use uh, CGRH, CGRH module and, uh, uh, use, to use, and uh, use that as uh, authentication part. We're using uh, attributes this is a part of uh, CG rates, let's say a module of uh, CG rates. Uh, th uh, this is uh, only a part of the, of the request because I want it to be uh, clearly. We have defined that our SIP username is this. This, this is the SIP username. And the SIP password is this. And then we're doing a JSON asynchronous uh, query from OpenSIPs. Uh, of course, we have to check the, the cast first. If it's already cast. We are doing the asynchronous uh, CGRH request to get the user uh, information. So uh, we are doing some uh, scripting to get the username and the password. Again with JSON. And uh, generally, these are the reasons why you we use with implementing any cast. And uh, we wanted to increase our SLA to our customers and the services. Uh, it, it might seem to be complicated, but uh, if you design it correctly, uh, I think uh, it, it's worth it. Worth. We have minimized the drop calls of, uh, in case of uh, subsystem failure, if it is uh, an open shift. I don't know. It, 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 hasn't crashed for me. I don't know. <coughs> it's an ideal setup for updates, for continuous delivery of software. So that this is the most important part for us. We want it to be able daily by daily or week by week to update our infrastructure. Anycast uh, gives you the opportunity to uh, work uh, with uh, QIPs. This can, this can be a very good uh, reason. Uh, you can change uh, the capacity of the network, of the, of the whole infrastructure, without changing the network architecture. You, you just uh, uh, put, let's say, new hardware or, uh, or new instance. Uh, I have to say that we, have, we don't have all the, all, part of the, all, the, all the parts of our infrastructure in uh, the data center. We use, this is like a hybrid model. We use what is needed uh, in a local data center and we, we use also the cloud provider and cloud uh, infrastructure to save data, to archive the data and have it in multiple places uh, simultaneously. So uh, we wanted to have the best possible user experience. So that's why. And finally, we think that uh, Anycast makes you sleep better at nights. I think it uh, does for does that uh, for us right now. Uh, a, a little bit, uh, okay, I have one minute. Uh, how we manage uh, complicated uh, infrastructures? We use uh, provisioning and uh, automation configuration management tools. doesn't go forward, never mind. Yes. 
lost internet. Yeah, we lost it. Internet. Because not connected. Wi-Fi. Yeah. Wi-Fi. No Wi-Fi. Okay, never mind. Okay, I, I will continue. I know what uh, I, others uh, is now. Uh, use configuration management tools like Puppet, Chef, and use continuous delivery uh, tools. There are some great uh, open source projects. You, you can find uh, later uh, the, the presentation. Uh, we use uh, also uh, continuous deployment uh, tools like Travis and uh, like uh, Spinnaker. Uh, so this is a, a very complicated uh, way to do the things. But it's the right way to do. It's uh, all the big uh, companies doing that, <coughs> and by doing that, they are um, they have the opportunity to create code and uh, functions and uh, let's say new features uh, day by day. So uh, we think that uh, if you want to have an active active uh, setup, and uh, we think this. Uh, uh, as it has some complicated yeah. stuff in the networking. If you don't, if you don't, uh, uh, if you don't have the experience with that, uh, don't uh, don't go with any cast at, at least for now. But if you have some networking experience, uh, I think uh, you must try it. Okay. Never mind. So that's it. We are finished. We lost uh, connectivity for uh, finishing the presentation. Oh, the Wi-Fi got you, huh? Yeah. Ah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, that was uh, the last the last part. Uh, it has to do with uh, create private repositories for your code. Uh, or the community uh, part of uh, code that uh, has been changed or tested by you that it works. Uh, do continuous benchmarks uh, if you change in the code or you change in the script. And run performance test. And uh, deploy with uh, Travis if it's, if it's possible. Every time. Just to be sure for your, for your code and for the infrastructure. So that's it. Uh, guys, thank you for listening. Thank you, Do you have any questions out here in the field? We've got one. We've got two. So, what's your SLA with current solution? You calculated one, that's the first question, and I have changed the second one. What happens if one of the open six fails? Does it have some kind of a backup or? It, uh, it, f first one, I will answer it next year. <laughs> the, and, the sec and, and, the second, and the second one, uh, it just fails and uh, nobody cares. It's because... Uh, it's because it's dropped, right? No. As if you, see, if you saw in the diagram before, we're keeping the states in a Redis database. So if... Uh, If an open ships instance <coughs> or a, a machine is down, we don't lose the states or the calls. Here. If you see here, there are RTP engines and the open ships. Okay, we, lo we lost one open ship machine. Nobody cares. We have a distribution of calls. <coughs> this is be done by here. In layer three protocol, we are using we are using BGP and ECMP equal cost multipathing. So if this goes down, the connections are uh, equally distributed to this machine. <coughs> the calls that I were here were not here were here were not impacted. We have the media proxies here, and uh, the calls have been saved here in database. 
So there is no impact at all. Thank you. You have a question? Yes. You can have to wait. So just following on from that one about uh, deploying RTP engine to be highly available with Redis, is there much else that's needed apart from having Redis as the back end and um, any that's set up for us? Is there anything specific that you need to do or any other comments about how you deploy that? Uh, this part, yeah. Uh, this uh, is using uh, Redis uh, key space notifications uh, to talk with the Redis uh, database. So it's, uh, uh, it's RTP uh, engine writes to its own database. Uh, engine one writes to database number one. Engine two writes to database two. Engine three writes to database three. But it can read and uh, notify other databases if this engine is down. So this engine has the key space notifications for engine two and engine three. And uh, this continues. This one writes in database two, but has key space notifications for database one and database three. Right, okay. So as soon as, as, soon as uh, if, if, what, if the sort of the second Redis server receives a packet that it doesn't recognize, it then looks it up. Is that how it works? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Using the key, the, key, the key space notifications. Yeah. Here, it, uh, this, this can be any casted also. And uh, where it, the packet that receives this, uh, this engine mm -hmm. uh, may have been created from this one. But it knows how to deal with the, with the call because of the key space notification feature. Okay, great. <laughs> I don't make a lot of money. <laughs> so, you know, yeah. job security. You're cutting me off at the pass. You, you keep so many data in uh, external services. Archives and so on. Uh, how are you manage the GDPR? No, we don't. We, <laughs> we don't say the data here. <laughs> uh, but a very nice question. Generally, what we have, we have uh, one of the benefits of having any cast also is that we, uh, regarding with GDPR, we can keep local data for, let's say, for our Greek customers, locally based in Greece, for example, and not outside Greece. So there's a law, let's say, in Greece that uh, you need to have your CDRs locally generated, generated, not stored only. And it says uh, generated. It never says what story. So about, uh, it's another thing. Uh, but uh, this uh, is a nice uh, benefit of the whole, the whole solution. Yes, we can uh, say it uh, locally. Uh, uh, ask Mr. Uh, uh, you, you can, uh, can, can we your slide? Can I use your data? Oh, suddenly everybody's got questions, huh? <laughs> I'm just going to take these in order. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very for a very nice presentation. So, yeah, at least in terms of scaling, so you showed first year, you know, one server, then two, and now that many servers. So how many happy customers do you serve? And what does that, how does that translate into uh, simultaneous calls that are handled hand at the same moment? Uh, 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 the, the numbers are about uh, more like uh, thousands of calls and uh, customers. But uh, uh, we're making, we making, making each transition before we had to or forced to. Mm -hmm. So we're in, we're, uh, right now, we don't have the need to do that. Currently, this is in a, in a beta stage. Our, uh, our capacity and our, uh, uh, let's say, our needs are not I'm going to switch right resolution. <coughs> uh, it has a better resolution I can do. Uh, okay. That's a possible. We, we, we wanted to expand that way. Mm. We'll be able to, to serve more happy customers. Thank you. Um, next question. You're using Cassandra, and I, I, yes, uh, yes, yes. Can you talk about your motivation I for using both of them? Uh, I've used more, more, uh, more, uh, more Redis, and the implementation with uh, Netflix. 
Uh, I just use the Cassandra just for testing, and I think that uh, I will use it more and more in the near future. Uh, I, I think uh, the guys will also implement a CAS mechanic for the user location uh, instead of MongoDB also uh, in the near future. So uh, I think this will be this will be changed because Mongo have some limitations, let's say, regarding the master master setup. Uh, it's using an, another uh, an, another way to, to work. Uh, so regarding the user location, uh, we will uh, use uh, Cassandra in the near future, for sure. A short uh, question. You mentioned that nobody cares if your open source dies. Uh, we also use any cartridge on BTP Magic. But you don't have TCP sessions that nobody cares? or I don't, ha I don't have. Do you use TCP, TLS for your customers? Very nice, uh, very nice, uh, very nice question. Uh, as I as I said, this is what was set up was tested with uh, uh, with UDP. Okay. So uh, this is uh, working closely with uh, UDP. TCP in, is another story, and uh, I don't have an answer right now to tell you how we will deal it in the end. I might have it next year. I will talk with you later. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, I have to cut off the questions, unfortunately. For any other questions for Vasilis, for any other questions for Vasilis, you can catch them on our uh, lunch break shortly, and we also have a coffee break later in the afternoon. And uh, he does have the ending to episode three of Game of Thrones, so just while you're talking, I'm very wary.